Hello, and welcome to Part 34 in the Diddy series on how to use Blender 2.7. In this video, we'll be talking about bones and rigging. Alright, so in this video, we're going to be creating a simple Minecraft character, and then we'll be adding bones to it, allowing us to pose and animate the character. If you're not sure what a Minecraft person looks like, it's basically a very simple person made up of six cubes. A head, a body, and two arms, and two legs. But the way we're going to be making this is we're going to be making it out of one mesh. In other words, once we finish the character, it's going to be one solid object just made up of separate sub-cubes or sub-blocks. To get started, let's go ahead and press 1 and 5 on our numpad to go to the front orthographic view. And I'll press tab to go into edit mode of the default cube. Now, this cube itself is going to be the head of the Minecraft character. But what I'll do inside of edit mode is duplicate it and scale and transform it to make the body and the arms and the legs. So with the entire mesh selected, I'll press A a few times to make sure it's all selected, is I'll duplicate it. So I'll press shift D on my keyboard. And I want to move it straight down. So I'll press Z on my keyboard to move it straight up and down, or in this case down, and I'll move it to just below the bottom of the head. Now, the body and the head are exactly the same size right now. And if I press three on my numpad to go to the side view or the right view, you can see that the header is the same width as the body, but we don't want that. We want the body to be thinner because if you've seen Minecraft, you know that the head is a big block and the body and legs and arms are thinner. So what I'll do is I'll press S to scale this, but I only want to scale it on the Y or the green axis. So I'll tap S on my keyboard and then tap Y and that will constrain my scaling to only the Y axis, but I want to be exactly half as thin as the head. So what I'll do is I'll press S and then Y and then I'll tap 0.5 on my keyboard and I'll press enter. So again, that was S, Y, 0.5, enter. And now the body is exactly half as wide as the head and perfectly centered. Let's switch into face select mode. And I'm gonna grab the bottom face of the body and I'll drag it a little bit down so the body's a little bit taller than the head. That looks pretty good to me. And I'll add the arms. Now the arms start with a cube, but they of course are just slightly taller than the body itself. So I'm going to put my 3D cursor over here just by clicking and I'll press shift A and I'll add a new cube and of course we're still in edit mode of the entire mesh. So shift A, I'll add a cube and I want to be exactly the same size or width as the body. So what I'll do is I'll press S and 0.5 and enter and now it's basically 1 8th. In other words, half as wide, half as tall and half as deep as the original cube, so S 0.5, enter, and I'll move it to the exact, or approximately, the exact right spot. So right about there, I'm gonna keep these a little bit spaced out. It's important that you don't overlap them, that will confuse your bones. Uh, we will have to fix that later, of course. I'm gonna grab the bottom face, just like I did with the body, and go back to my front view, and I'll drag it straight down, and I'm gonna make it just a little bit longer than the actual body. So that's our arm, but we're actually gonna be adding two bones to it, an upper arm bone and a lower arm bone. And so we need the arm to be able to bend. To make it able to bend, we have to make a few lines or a few extra edge loops all the way around it. So to make that happen, I'm gonna press Control R on my keyboard, which, of, which is of course loop, cut, and slide. And I'll click and right click to put that cut right in the middle. And of course it goes all the way around. So again, that is Control R and then put your mouse over one of these up and down edges, click and right click. Now, if I left it just here, in other words, only having one edge loop all the way around the middle of the cube, when I bent the arm, things would get very kind of squished or sheared in the middle of the arm. So what I'm gonna do is actually bevel this single edge to make two edges slightly away from the arm so it does not uh, crush the arm basically when we bend the elbow. So I'm going to press Control B with this whole edge loop selected. If you deselected it, then you can press Alt and right click to select the entire edge loop. So it's all selected. In this case, I'm going to press Control B to double that edge loop out and spread it out to right about there. And I'll press Control R again to remake that initial cut right in the middle of the arm. So now we have this edge loop right there and that one which are equidistant both from the middle cut 
and from the end or the top and bottom of the arm. That's exactly what we want. So it's at this point that I want to duplicate the entire arm and move it over. I'm not going to be that careful in this case about making it exactly uh, the exact same spacing, uh, but you can if you wish. To select this whole arm, I'm just going to put my mouse cursor over one of the edges and press L on my keyboard. That will select that entire island. That's the L key. And so I'll press Shift D now uh, to duplicate it, and I'll press X and move it over so it doesn't go up and down at all from my front view. All right, so we have two arms, a body, and a head. We needed some legs. In this case, I'm just going to duplicate an arm, Shift D move it down to here approximately. Now, what I don't want is for the two legs to overlap. I want the legs to have a little bit of space in between them. And I don't want the legs to be rectangular at all. So what I'll do is I'll scale down the legs, but only on the width and the depth, or in this case, only on the X and Y axes. To do that, if I press S, it just scales the entire thing, including on the Z axis, but I don't want it to scale on the Z axis. So what I'll do is I'll press S, and then Shift Z. And what that does, when you press Shift and then X, Y, or Z, after you press S, it scales it, but it negates that one axis. So it'll only scale right now on the X and Y. So again, S to scale, and then Shift Z to negate the Z axis. So, just a little bit, right about there, that looks good to me. And I want the legs to be a little bit taller than the arms, so I'll tap S and then Z to scale only on that Z axis, so right about there. Okay, I'll maybe tap S and Shift Z again to make it just a little bit wider. Oh, that's good to me, so there'll be a gap there. All right, Shift D to duplicate, X to move it only on the X axis. I'll move this one over to line up with that edge approximately, and we're good to go. So we have the mesh finished, uh, and we'll take a sigh of relief, because now we're gonna jump into bones. The first thing I'll do though, is I'm gonna move the character up so he's standing on the ground. So I'll tap uh, tab on my keyboard to go back into object mode, and I'll move the whole mesh up. So I'm only gonna move it up and down. It's important that I don't just press G, because I can move it side to side. So I'll press G and then Z on my keyboard to move it up, or just use my gizmo like that. It's at this point that we're going to add a new kind of object. We're going to add an armature object, which comes in the form, at least at the start, of a single bone. Now, of course, when you add new objects, it goes to wherever the 3D cursor is, and it's really important that you add it right in the middle of the character, exactly 0, 0, 0 on the X, Y, and Z axes, or at least 0 on the X axis. So I'm going to press Shift-C on my keyboard, to make the 3D cursor go right to the middle of my scene. It also kind of zoomed in on my characters. So again, that's Shift C. And now I'll add a new object. So I'm in object mode right now, and I'm gonna go down to add an armature and single bone, or of course I can press Shift A, armature and single bone. When you add a bone object, you can see that it's in the middle of my mesh right now, so it's hard for me to see. So I'll press Z on my keyboard to go into wireframe mode. Uh, it's right there, but when you're in solid display mode, it's hard to see. So the first thing we'll do is I'm going to go up here to the person tab, which appears when you have a bone selected, and I'm going to select x-ray under the display heading. X-ray allows you to see the bone even when it's inside or behind a mesh, just like an x-ray would let you see your bones through your skin. So now I have this single bone, and it's between his lower legs or feet. And I want to move it up because this bone is going to be the spine bone. So I'm just going to grab it in object mode and I'll move it up so that the spine is kind of right starting at his pelvis. And it's at this point that I want to start editing this bone. So just like a mesh has object mode and edit mode and some other modes, well, bones have object mode, edit mode, and pose mode when we're ready to animate and pose the character. So I'm going to switch into edit mode, which of course you can do with the tab key. And I'm going to grab the tail, in other words, this little orb at the end of the bone. This little orb is called the head. Of course, you can select the bone itself, um, or you can select the tail of the bone. So I'm going to grab the tail and move it straight up to the top of the body or at the base of the neck. This character is not going to have a separate neck. It's just a spine bone and a head bone. Now, the head is attached to the spine, and so we need to create another bone. So what I can do is just select this tail 
nub, I'll call it, and I can extrude another bone from this bone and it'll automatically be attached as a child would be attached to a parent. So I'll tap E to extrude and I get a second bone that's attached, so that's a child of the first bone, but I'll tap Z on my keyboard to move it straight up and down and I'll click when I'm happy. And that's pretty approximate. So now I have two bones and it's at this point that I need to remind you or tell you that it's a good idea to name your bones. I'm not going to do that in this case. I'm just going to show you how to name them. Um, but if you're making a bone structure that had lots of bones like finger bones and you know different bones to control elbows and we'll get to that in future videos, it's important to name your bones. So how you do that is you select a bone, go to the bone tab when you have a bone selected and you can name this bone. In this case I'm going to name it head and I'll name this one spine. And in this case, the spine bone is the parent of the head. So when you move the spine, the head will move along with it. Next, we need to add the arm and leg bones. And this is where things get a little bit more complicated. What I want to do is actually make the bone in exactly the right spot. Uh, I want to make it, I want to make sure that the bone is in the exact middle of the arm. So it's not too far to the right or left or too far back or too far forward. So what I'll do actually is go back into object mode of the armature and select the mesh, go into edit mode of the mesh with, with the tab key of course, and I'm going to select the top face of this arm because when we add new bones within the armature, of course whenever you add a new object it goes to where the, the 3D cursor is. I want to make this 3D cursor go to the exact same middle spot of this arm, in other words the middle of this face. So to snap the 3D cursor to the middle of this face, I'm going to press Shift S on my keyboard. And Shift S is a very powerful menu. It's the snap menu, so Shift S, and it allows you to snap your cursor to an object or an object to snap to your cursor. So in this case, I'm going to select cursor to selected, and that'll snap my 3D cursor over to that face. So now, if I press Tab to go back into object mode and press Tab to go into edit mode, of the armature and I press shift A, it adds a new bone exactly where that 3D cursor is, which is exactly in the middle of this arm. So that's great. It's a little bit of a long process, but uh, at least now we know we have it, the bone in the exact middle of the arm. I can select the tail nub of that bone and drag it straight down to the bottom of the hand. I'm in the front orthographic view. And so now we have an arm bone, but we want two arm bones. We want an upper bone and a lower bone. I'm not going to just go halfway between and extrude again. It's, this way is better. If you select the bone and press W to bring up your specials menu, you can select subdivide. So again, select the body of the bone itself and press W and subdivide. We have a problem though. I'm not exactly sure that this nub or this joint between the two bones is in the exact right spot. What I want to make sure is that, and if I go back into object mode and go into edit mode of the mesh, that the joint is in the exact right spot as this edge loop that we created on our arm. So to make sure that's the case, I'm going to select that entire edge loop. So I'll hold Alt on my keyboard, right click to select that whole edge loop, and I'll press Shift S to again bring up my snapping menu and say cursor to selected. So the cursor will go to the middle of my selection, in this case the very middle front and back and set aside, and uh, top and bottom of the arm mesh. So now I'll go back into edit mode of the um, bones and I'm going to press with this nub selected, shift S, and selection to cursor. So it'll snap to exactly the right spot. That was a little bit of a long process, but it's important to get that nub or that joint in the exact right spot so that the arm will bend correctly. Now that we have these two arm bones set up properly, what I'm going to do is make sure that the bone rolls are done right. Sometimes if you move a bone or rotate a bone, the roll, in other words the rotation of the bone in edit mode will be incorrect and that will cause your bones to behave weirdly and not and you'll lose control of, of how the bones can rotate and it'll just become an annoyance. So how I can make sure these bones are not rolled incorrectly? And if I go down to the armature menu with a bone selected, you can see that there's a bone roll option. And I can set a roll, and that's basically what a roll looks like. And if you had it wrong, it would be something like that. If you want to just have it recalculate, you can select some bones 
and you can press Control N on your keyboard. In this case, I'm gonna recalculate the roll based on the global Z axis. So this bone is pointing up and down, so that's a good option to use. Control N, global Z axis. So now the bone's just very slightly recalculated. Let's go ahead and duplicate the arm. So I'll press Shift D in edit mode, of course, and then press X to make it go side to side. I'm just gonna eyeball this one to make this video a little bit shorter. Maybe like that. Great, let's go ahead and duplicate this for the two legs. So I'll Shift D to duplicate. And of course, this is gonna be a little bit too uh, short. So I'll grab this one, pull it straight down, and I will have to recalculate or figure out where this one should be. So I'll press Tab to go back into object mode, press Tab to go into edit mode of the mesh again. Alt right click on that edge, select the edge loop, Shift S, and cursor to selected. And so now that the 3D cursor is down here, I can go back into edit mode of the bones and with that nub selected, Shift S and cursor to, or selection to cursor, right there. You can see I wasn't quite right. Um, these bones are pointing out a little bit, so I might wanna grab those two and just kind of move them over a little bit. And this is where I would wanna recalculate the bone roll. So armature, bone roll, recalculate roll, and global Z axis. So now they're pointing forward at me. Let's go ahead and duplicate that, that side to side. Shift D, X. That looks pretty good to me. And again, we're being, being pretty rough here. All right, we're forgetting one thing, and that is that we want the bones to be all parented to one sort of master bone. In this case, the master bone or the parent bone of all the limbs should be the spine because that's how it is in real life. If you grab somebody's midsection or torso and pull, their arms are gonna come along with it. So the head bone's already a child because we extruded it up from the tail of the spine. But the upper arms and upper leg bones are still sort of detached. So I'm gonna select all four of those, select the uh, spine bone last and press Control P. And we wanna keep the bones offset, in other words, at their normal distance. So I'll Control P, keep offset, and of course we selected the spine last, so it becomes the parent. So now we have these dotted lines to show the parent-child relationship. We are finished creating our rig. Of course, I would go around and name it, but in this case, we're just gonna go straight into making the mesh attached to the bone. So I'll press tab to go back into object mode, and now it's time to parent the mesh, in other words, the blocks to the bones. Now, we're not just gonna parent it all as one object. We're gonna basically do a special kind of parenting. It's called with automatic weights, which lets Blender automatically figure out which vertices, in fact, where all the vertices should be parented to. In other words, this vertice up here at the corner of his head should only be parented to the head bone. And this vertice at the bottom of the arm or at the hand should only be parented to the lower arm bone. Now, Blender is not gonna do this very well at first, and that's why in the very next video in this series, I'm gonna talk about weight paint mode, which will allow us to change the weight. In other words, how much each vertice is affected by each bone using weight paint mode in the mesh different modes, it's right there. First, let's attach the mesh to the bone. So what I'll do is I'll select the mesh first, hold shift, select the armature second, and I'll press control P, and I have to select with automatic weights. So we're gonna use armature to form here. It's gonna automatically choose the weight of each vertice in terms of which bone is controlling which vertice. It's really quickly done. Let's go ahead and test it. I'll select the armature, I'll go into pose mode, and this is where I can select each individual bone again, but I can rotate that bone to make the character move and pose the character. Now, you're noticing that things are going very odd, and this is actually okay. Because our mesh is not an organic shape, it's just cubes, and we know that each cube uh, behaves independently of each other cube, things are not gonna work very well at first. Basically, it did the best job it could, but when I rotate this upper arm bone, Blender sort of thought that when it did the automatic weights that some of these other vertices belong to this bone. So it kind of, let's say it took this vertice and assigned it to be influenced, in other words, its weight is maybe 25% influenced by this bone and 75% influenced by this bone. I'm not sure it's impossible to tell at this point. In the next video, we will correct it. But as you can see, I can pose the character. I can bend 
with the R key, of course, his legs and arms, and I can do a somewhat okay job, but again, we'll correct that in the next video. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.